Hi hey guys, I am now driving the Mercedes AMG GLA 45. Now, um, as we all know, the Mercedes GLA, it is the entry level Mercedes crossover, all right, uh, that sits prim on an A class platform. And as we know, that there is an all new A class in town, there will soon be an all new GLC, uh, sorry, an all new GLA that is waiting to come in. So uh, this car really should require no further introduction where facts is concerned. Alright, but let's just talk about really on where this car belongs in the market. Now you see, right, if you were to rewind back two decades ago, 15, 20 years ago, back when I was still in school, okay? I remember at that time, right, nobody dreams about owning a Mercedes until you've become, well, un until you get near to pensioning age. Huh? So, I mean, Mercedes at that time was always, well, the uncle's car, all right? The headmaster's car, the businessman's car, the CEO's car. Young people in school, they dream about Mitsubishi Evos. They dream about Subaru Impreza STIs, the GTRs, all the JDM, all the JDM specials. All right, you know, at that time in the nineties, was Japanese cars at their peak. That's what we always say, right? That was the best uh, era of JD, of JDM cars, and we always, uh, yeah. I remember those eras, we were, that era, we were all dreaming about whichever generation of the Evo, like the Evo 1, ke, Evo 3, ke, Evo 6, ke, whatever, it is always that class of car, right? And the for, the formula for those, that, the mechanical formula, all right, that they used to make up those cars are strangely familiar if you bring it to the present because your Mitsubishi Evo or your Subaru a WRX of that time, the Impreza WRX as it was still called then, they all had two liter turbo engines with four wheel drive. Sounds familiar? Volkswagen Golf R used this formula, right? And now um, here we have the Mercedes AMG GLA 45 also on the same formula, a heavily boosted two liter inline four punching 300 near 400 horsepower driving all four wheels okay and yep the japanese thought about this segment way back then okay and so you see right nowadays people don't talk so much about dreaming about driving mitsubishi evos about all the impressions right? because that segment uh well i mean there are still has a cult following but it no longer holds the same kind of appeal that they used to because the crowd that would have bought you know the, the same crowd that the Evo and the WRX spoke to all those years ago now look at cars like this they now look at the gla they now look at the a45 they look at the golf r the civic fk8 type r that kind of car turbocharged performance two liters still all right all-wheel drive and fast as hell so you remember those days how those of them those of those of you all who drive the who drive all the evos and stis they use their cars to go and shame the people who spend their money on a BMW 325, 328. Mercedes C-Class don't have to say that. Uh, those days, Mercedes C-Class were not much of an uh, enthusiast choice. All right, Those days, the enthusiast choice for German cars really were the BMW 3 Series. And then those fellas who drive their Evos, they all boast about how they always make cars like the 328, the 325 look like easy meat. And that is the crowd of people that now look at the GLA 45. And my God, this thing is, I think in 
Bobby has put it in words that I cannot think of a better choice of words. He he calls this the fastest real world car. And chance and I mean there are cars out there that are faster on paper, but not many cars out there will be able to lift will be able to leave the GLA 45 here for dead in any real world driving scenario because I mean just look at this this engine is outright explosive and it has that and when you step on it right there is that amusing burble from the exhaust that goes pop 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 you know it it adds to the occasion of the driving but you see unlike the likes of the evo and sti of that of those days the gla 45 here is a, also happens to be a very usable day-to-day -day car because it is it has an automatic transmission those days if you drive an evo or a, or a wrx you have to deal with a heavy kind of a heavy clutch la and all that and yeah that may be very appealing to an enthusiast the sound of it may sound very appealing if you're coming from an enthusiast but i assure you when it is this kind of traffic standstill traffic you move 10 meters every one minute that is not appealing at all so the gla 45 here or, or, or rather the all these new generation the gla 45s the golf r's they they marry they offer that enthusiast appeal that the evos and sti used to offer they have they offer the same kind of performance all conquering traction but they have far greater day-to-day -day usability here now the, the one thing about you know the gla all right and all of these mfa platform mercedes cars all right the a class the cla uh yes we know that they are targeted at the young enthusiast crowd but they also had the unfortunate habit of being well too ridiculously stiff now remember the previous gen a class i was a i had driven the a180 the lower spec a180 and i've also driven the top spec a45 and i can tell you both of them felt ridiculously stiff on the move suspension uh i would describe them literally as bone breaking and that is one thing that i noted on the current a class that saw the biggest improvement in in which when i drove the a250 the recent a250 i was the one thing that impressed me most was how much plusher it had become compared to the previous gen a class now this is of course uh, based on the previous gen a class platform so we have to evaluate this on uh based on the findings of the previous gen a class and i can tell you one thing the gla because it is tuned to have crossover suv kind of characteristics the ride is just that little bit plusher even in this amg 45 trim and that contributes to make it a day-to-day -day more usable and b actually faster in the real world now allow me to explain why a lot of enthusiasts equate stiffer suspension with being faster around the corners yes that's true if you are driving on a racetrack but when you are driving on public roads you may have an expansion joint here you may have a pothole there you may have a, a patch right at the apex this kind of thing right when you are caught when you are powering your way through a corner and you hit one of these disturbances an overly stiff suspension will cause your car to bounce 
out of control. That is, this is the kind of situation where you need at actually a bit of pliancy to iron out all these uh, imperfections on the surface to ensure that your car is able to carry itself around without breaking its stride, without losing its momentum. Yeah, and you know, when even when you're traveling on a straight line for that matter, you need a bit of plushness in the suspension so that you are able to carry high speed without needing to, to slow down every time when you know the road bubbles a bit. Yeah, so overly so stiff suspension setup perfect for track use, but out here in the real world, you must have that bit of pliancy and the GLA 45 here gives you just enough all right that you are that it that it is it, it maintains a certain degree of composure as you are as you are hammering it on less than perfect roads This car, it is, it just about feel docile enough on, you know, when you're puttering around, all right, it, it, it is, it makes just about a passable impression of being docile when traffic is heavy, but when you gun it, oh, it just wants to fly. and. Also, the other thing is that the chassis of this car it is actually a very communicative chassis. It is both grippy and communicative and that is not a combo that is often found, right? Sometimes when some cars, right, they are so grippy that they, tr they, they transmit nothing to you, the driver, but this one this is a car that really it has a ton of performance but it gives you so much confidence to power it around a fast bend there's good feedback from the steering all right and you know that the limits the, of adhesion is rather high and which means you really have to do something very, very stupid to upset this car. So yeah, I mean, if you are a driving enthusiast, right, you're looking for something with a modicum of day-to-day -day usability, all right, but great driving appeal. You want something that is properly fast. That is, when I say fast, means that you can get from point A to point B relatively quickly GLA does its job it is one of those cars that really uh, embolden you to press on and it makes your day-to-day -day commute that much more interesting see some cars all right they are just dull white goods that are just there for you to go from point a to point b without fuss that's it some cars are meant are so focused on the business of going fast that they are for all intents and purposes unlivable this one balances that just about right yes it is focused on being fast but it is just about a passable day-to-day -day car, all right? It has just enough, it has decent ride comfort, I would say, decently refined, uh, not too cramped inside. Road uh, ride comfort, okay lah, huh? So, um, well, it is, uh, well, it, lack, it does lack a few pieces of equipment you expect from this price i mean 
no keyless entry, no gas strut hinges at the bonnet. Those two were the real shock, were the real shockers for me. All right, but still, if you are look, if you are an enthusiast looking for a day-to-day -day car, this the GLA 45 here actually fits the bill quite well.